daily video Bible reading from the Net Bible, Genesis chapters 39 and 40 from the Old Testament. Now Joseph had been brought down to Egypt. An Egyptian named Potiphar, an official of Pharaoh and the captain of the guard, purchased him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him there. The Lord was with Joseph. He was successful and lived in the household of his Egyptian master. His master observed that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made everything he was doing successful. So Joseph found favor in his sight and became his personal attendant. Potiphar appointed Joseph overseer of his household and put him in charge of everything he owned. From the time Potiphar appointed him over his household and over all that he owned, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's household for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on everything that he had, both in his house and in his fields. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. He gave no thought to anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and good looking. Soon after these things, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Have sex with me. But he refused, saying to his master's wife, Look, my master does not give any thought to his household with me here, and everything that he owns he has put into my care. There is no one greater in this household than I am. He has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. So how could I do such a great evil and sin against God? Even though she continued to speak to Joseph day after day, he did not respond to her invitation to have sex with her. One day he went into the house to do his work when none of the household servants were there in the house. She grabbed him by his outer garment saying, have sex with me. But he left his outer garment in her hand and ran outside. When she saw that he had left his outer garment in her hand and had run outside, she called for her household servants and said to them, See, my husband brought in a Hebrew man to us to humiliate us. He tried to have sex with me, but I screamed loudly. When he heard me raise my voice and scream, he left his outer garment beside me and ran outside. So she laid his outer garment beside her until his master came home. This is what she said to him. That Hebrew slave you brought to us tried to humiliate me. But when I raised my voice and screamed, he left his outer garment and ran outside. When his master heard his wife say, this is the way your slave treated me, he became furious. Joseph's master took him and threw him into the prison. The place where the king's prisoners were confined. So he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him kindness. He granted him favor in the sight of the prison warden. The warden put all of the prisoners under Joseph's care. He was in charge of whatever they were doing. The warden did not concern himself with anything that was in Joseph's care because the Lord was with him and whatever he was doing, the Lord was making successful. After these things happened, the cupbearer to the king of Egypt and the royal baker offended their master, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was enraged with his two officials, the cupbearer and the baker, so he imprisoned them in the house of the captain of the guard in the same facility where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard appointed Joseph to be their attendant, and he served them. They spent some time in custody. Both of them, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, had a dream the same night. Each man's dream had its own meaning. When Joseph came to them in the morning, he saw that they were looking depressed. So he asked Pharaoh's officials, who were with him in custody in his master's house, Why do you look so sad today? They told him, We both had dreams, but there is no one to interpret them. Joseph responded, Don't interpretations belong to God? Tell them to me. So the chief cupbearer told his dream to Joseph. In my dream, there was a vine in front of me. On the vine, there were three branches. As it budded, its blossoms opened and its clusters ripened into grapes. Now Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, so I took the grapes, squeezed them into his cup, and put the cup in Pharaoh's hand. 
This is its meaning, Joseph said to him. The three branches represent three days. In three more days, Pharaoh will reinstate you and restore you to your office. You will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand, just as you did before when you were cupbearer. But remember me when it goes well for you, and show me kindness. Make mention of me to Pharaoh, and bring me out of this prison. For I really was kidnapped from the land of the Hebrews, and I have done nothing wrong here, for which they have put me in a dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation of the first dream was favorable, he said to Joseph, I also appeared in my dream, and there were three baskets of white bread on my head. In the top basket, there were baked goods of every kind for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating them from the basket that was on my head. Joseph replied, This is its meaning. The three baskets represent three days. In three more days, Pharaoh will decapitate you and impale you on a pole. Then the birds will eat your flesh from you. On the third day, it was Pharaoh's birthday, so he gave a feast for all his servants. He lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and the head of the chief baker in the midst of his servants. He restored the chief cupbearer to his former position so that he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But the chief baker he impaled, just as Joseph had predicted. But the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. God, thank you for the story of Joseph. These are some of my favorite stories in, in the Bible, especially the Old Testament, uh, the story of Joseph and, and how he keeps getting put into circumstances that for the most part, he didn't do anything to put himself there. Although in the previous chapters, we could say maybe he could have toned down his excitement about his dream about people bowing down before him. <laughs> but honestly, most of these things that have gotten him into these bad situations weren't things that he did or, or necessarily he could even control, uh, including Potiphar's wife, who, who asked for something that she knew he wouldn't, couldn't give because he was a man of God and then destroyed him using that information. Um, same thing in prison. He asked the cupbearer to remember him when he talked to, to Pharaoh, uh, but yet the person didn't. And so these are all things that Joseph is having to pay for. That's how we look at it in our daily life, right? These are all things he's having to pay for, yet for the most part, he didn't do anything to put him in him self in these situations. And that is why I love the story of Joseph. I think that's so much us, God, that sometimes we care so much about what other people think and, and what other people are doing uh, that we forget that it's you, <laughs> you who is in charge, uh, that the only person's opinion who matters is you. And I watch Joseph in the form of just a couple sentences, but for that, that was a great temptation for him. He was single, had been celibate, as far as I know, his whole life. And uh, a beautiful woman is saying, come have sex with me. And they're all alone uh, in this gigantic palace. And, and really, who would know? Just the two of them, right? Yet once again, Joseph chooses to do the right thing, not only for her honor or to be respectful for the master of his house, but more importantly, because he is a man of God. He is one of your children. And Joseph continues as we go through these stories, he continues to make those decisions where it doesn't matter what anybody else has said about him or anybody else is doing to him. That he is faithful to you, God. That he's faithful to the values that you have instilled in him, that he's faithful to the commandments that you've instilled in him, that he's even faithful to the people around him, that even though they might not be Christian, he doesn't change who he is around other people. Even these people who weren't Christian, who weren't men of God, could still see that Joseph clearly was. 
So that's what I would like for us to concentrate on today, Gon. Can you help us focus on that it doesn't matter what other people say about us. It doesn't matter what other people do to us or for us. It only matters what you think of us. It only matters what, what you see us do, which is everything, and how you feel about it. I just went through the situation with a friend of mine who was devastated at something somebody had said to her um, online. And we've all had people say bad stuff about us, whether to our face or, or behind our backs. But the only opinion that I want to have matter in my life, God, is yours. The only thing that I want to have turn my head or turn my heart or change my attitude or change my ways of doing things. I only want those things to come from you, God. I don't want what the world has to offer. I only want what you have to offer. God, I thank you for this incredible opportunity that you give us a path to go on, a path of righteousness, a path of um, honesty. For Joseph, a path of, of celibacy. And you were right there with us. It is our selfishness that causes us to fall off of that path and, and choose sin over you. So God, I just ask today that our choices be about you. That the only thing in our lives that should ever matter is what you want us to do. And what you think of us and then allow us to in turn reach out to other people with that love and that grace and that forgiveness and that patience that you have shown to us thank you God Amen